grew up in Alsace, but where did you begin to start realizing that there was food around you? Because you had a lot of food around you growing up. I mean, I was a late bloomer, kind of, because, uh, you know, uh, I was in the kitchen all the time, and mm. actually my, in my house at home in Strasbourg, my bedroom was right above the kitchen. So mm. every morning, it was like a steamer basket. Right. I could smell like, what's we, yeah. what do we no, have today? I was like five, six years old. I come down and say, I know today we have a sauerkraut with a, a roast pork. And they always were always amazed. I said, I can smell it upstairs. Right. Don't be amazed. Um, but I wasn't real, I was in the kitchen, but I was more like an entertaining kid. Mm. I organized all the birthday for my, my, my sis siblings, mm. sister, brother. I was 16 when uh, they took me to uh, a three star restaurant for my birthday. Mm. And I was like, I couldn't believe that you could make a living out of this bit, uh, out of food. Mm. You know, at the time in, it was 1973, you know, for me, because we were a big family. Um, my grandmother, my parents were like three generations living on the one roof uh, at home. Was a part of the table, yeah. family style, and people would jump in there and yeah. serving themselves. And if you were late, uh, you <laughs> you had to scrape the, the corner of the pot. We never went to restaurants ever, mm. ever, ever, ever. So uh, when they took me for my birthday, it was like wow. There was a ballet of waiters, the food. It was like right. this is what I want to do. The chef came to the table at the end of the meal, and my father said, "Listen, I'm, uh, my son is good for nothing. If you're looking for somebody to mm -hmm. scrape pots and to." wash dishes and to clean uh, on a Saturday or two months after. You'd gone from being at home, not being the person cooking, to suddenly being surrounded by a completely different level of food. So what did you learn during that period? I mean, you know, when you grow up with food, I always mm -hmm. have good food. Uh, right. my, father and I were, my father was cooking every Sunday because there was an excuse not to go to church. <laughs> so we all went to church because, you know, we grew up like this on uh, some Alsatian fair. So going to the to restaurant like that, I was like, it was a big jump for me. I mean, I had the flavor from my parents, from the, the household, but uh, I never experienced any, anything in a restaurant. Mm. So it was a culture shock. Kind of. It was a similar ingredients because mm. Alsatian ingredients, a lot of cabbage, right. potato, and uh, game, mm -hmm. birds, pheasant, uh, venison, etc. But it was just like so elaborate, right. you know, because people, I think today we're going to more simplicity, but at the time you go to a restaurant because you, you had to go you had to eat something that you can do at home. And then you uh, left Alsace. Where did you go next? From Alsace, I went to the south of France mm -hmm. uh, because I wanted to learn about tomato and basil and olive right. oil and uh, Provencal cooking. And then uh, my dream was always uh, one of my first job. I was like, as an apprentice, I met I met Paul Bocuse. I uh, mm -hmm. always wanted to go work right. in Lyon. So I went from uh, something a couple of years after a phone call to Lyon mm. and I ended up at Paul Bocuse for a year. A lot of chefs spend one, you know, their entire career in one area focusing on that cuisine and yeah. you really were able to study under such great masters in different parts of France. So how did that affect you? It affected me a lot because I want to really learn about the original cooking of France. Mm. Because, you know, you go to uh, Brittany or Normandy, you go it's to totally the southwest and yeah. Provence, and that's totally different kind of cooking. And I was like, I can't stop here, you know. My, uh, yeah. Christophe Columbus um, <laughs> in me wanted to learn more, so I was, I was dealing with all the spices and everything, and then uh, I got an opportunity to go to Thailand mm -hmm. after seven years training in France. And how did that affect your cooking? Because obviously, even today, it's a huge part of your influence. And tell me a little bit about where you went in Bangkok and what you were doing. I mean, I went to the Oriental Hotel in Bangkok. I was in charge of the French mm -hmm. restaurant, so it was kind of frustrated for me because I, I had fresh ginger, coconut, lemongrass, chilies, and all these mm. things. And I couldn't use it because people on my clientele were Thai, and they came to eat foie gras, and right. on beurre blanc, and right. cream, truffle. And they uh, wanted your food. They wanted French food. <laughs> and, uh, so it was kind of a, but I said to my cook, my team, I say, from 80 to 80, I was there from 80 to 82. Mm. I said, you, I want to eat Thai food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the next two years. Mm. So I want to see everything. I'm going to teach you French food. food. I, you have to teach me everything about Thai food. <laughs> so I learned everything. Just watch everything. How to extract the best flavor of lemongrass, of lime leaf, mm. of ginger. Um, on uh, the, so the first, first year, I was really French, French, French. And then uh, I started to put a little, a little ginger for my, with my sauté foie gras. Mm -hmm. I started to put a little bit of, you know, galang gal here, a little bit of uh, chili here. And, and people got it. They loved mm. it. After that, I went to Singapore for a year. Which are as well great street food, and, and then Hong Kong, and then I did uh, six months in Japan. So five years in Asia, so seven years in France. Oh. And five years in Asia changed my life completely, you know, mm. because I learned a whole uh, different way of cooking. So we're going to go back to that <laughs> Thai 
moment in time and tell us a little bit about the dish that you're going to be cooking for us today based on those early inspirations. The, day, the dish I'm going to cook for you today is the, my inspiration was the 1980. I came out of the plane. When the door opened up the plane, it was like, I could smell a different, uh, it was a culture yeah. shock for me, you know, coming from Alsace. From the airport to the hotel, I stopped five times. On my first taste, it was a similar to the curry you're going to try today. It was a green curry chicken. And today, the, I'm doing it with a black sea bass. On a, very similar. I'm adding a little Japanese uh, twist to it with a little kombu. Mm. Wonderful. Well, will you show us the recipe? Uh, let's step into the kitchen. Wonderful. So here we are in uh, JG's kitchen. Yeah. And I'm going to show you the flavor and the technique of my uh, memories of um, my time in Thailand. So I'm starting with some uh, tea water, some kombu, which is seaweed. Which I break into the tea. Of course, I'm adding some uh, lemongrass. So I'm gonna smash a little bit. So in Thailand, everything starts with water. We're gonna put some shallots, garlic cloves, on my favorite herb. Actually, it's a leaf. It's a kaffir lime leaf, which gives a beautiful uh, fragrance. So we're gonna let this steep all the way until it's cold, and then we blend it into this beautiful uh, green puree. So the second step, so there's two steps. Step to the sauce is. Uh, the herbal puree. So I'm using toasted cumin seeds, I'm using coriander seeds, some jalapeno, some lemon zest, salt. On the herbs are the herbs they use in Thailand, which are mint for refreshment, on the coriander for fragrance. This is gonna be blanched for about 10 seconds, shocked in ice water, and then blend into this very beautiful green puree. Base one, base two. And then we're gonna finish this sauce. What I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm adding my puree into a, a pot. I'm adding, of course, coconut milk, have to be, for my green curry. I'm adding some uh, cream on an, uh, a spoon of uh, creme fraiche. Every, every of the dairy uh, adds a different uh, flavor. So we mix that together, and we're gonna finish the sauce with some uh, green puree. So usually the curry in Thailand is a kind of uh, pale green, because they cook the herbs. So I added my touch, which is, uh, the fresh green puree in there. So that's for that. We're gonna bring that to a boil while we saute the fish. I'm pairing this with a beautiful black sea bass. So we're gonna cut a piece of, uh, of sea bass. You can do this with any fish. That sauce is good with chicken. It would be good with uh, a lot of things. So my sea bass, which I'm gonna season with salt, pepper. And of course, I'm gonna pair it with some vegetables. This is a Romanesco cauliflower. I will cut a couple of florets out of it. I think very important always uh, the balance of uh, protein and vegetables. Now we're ready to cook. So I'm adding a little bit of uh, olive oil in a non-stick pan to saute my, uh, my sea bass when it's quite smoky. High heat. I really want the skin to be a little, uh, a little crispy here. And then we're gonna blanch the vegetables in the boiling water. I mean, you can wash the vegetable. That, that could be paired with a Brussels sprout, could be paired with broccoli, broccoli rub, spinach, anything green. On the sauce, we're gonna just gonna bring it to a, just to a simmer. As you can see, it's very bright. What's nice about this sauce is where this green curry you can really make it ahead of time. Okay, I'm almost ready to flip my fish. I want the skin to be crispy. Almost there. So the fish is ready. On here are my vegetables. I arrange my vegetable on a plate. La cibas. And the sauce almost comes to a boil. It's ready to go. And here's my curry. Thank you for watching. This is my green curry sea bass, inspiration of Thailand, 1980.